So after four years of investigating the FBI's investigation into possible collusion between the Trump 2016 campaign and Russia, special counsel John Durham released his findings yesterday. A 300-page report, and in it, Durham, who was first appointed by then-Attorney General William Barr in 2019, accuses the Bureau of acting negligently but did not reveal any bombshells, as many Republicans had long claimed he would. Durham found no evidence the Justice Department and the FBI conspired in a deep state plot to investigate Trump's ties to Russia in 2016. In addition, Durham did not recommend any wholesale changes at the FBI. The special counsel also appears to relitigate two of the cases he lost that went to trial in which he brought criminal charges. The Durham report has been contradicted by two other reports, including one released in 2020 by the Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee. The committee's report, as well as one from a Justice Department watchdog, found the FBI's investigation has some flaws but was warranted and said the Trump campaign posed a counterintelligence risk to the U.S. by opening itself to foreign Influence. Let's bring in right now Washington correspondent for The New York Times, Michael Schmidt. Michael, this is a four-year investigation investigating the investigators. This is a guy that got humiliated time and time again. Uh, Trump newspapers and Trump TV networks got humiliated by following a lot of uh, sort of the breadcrumbs that he sprinkled around. And time and time again, he had nothing to show for it. Now there seems to be this argument that, oh, you know, the FBI, that Republicans want to defund the FBI because they even launched this investigation. I want to go back and just underline what, what Mika just said there. Uh, this is from 2020 uh, after Marco Rubio's Senate Intelligence Committee put out their report. Uh, the report's language is often uh, stark, describing Trump's uh, campaign uh, to Russian outreach as a, quote, grave counterintelligence threat. Let, let me say, say that again. Uh, describing Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort's receptivity to Russian outreach as a, quote, grave counterintelligence threat that made the campaign susceptible to, quote, malign Russian influence. This was Marco Rubio and other members of the Republican Senate committee, the Intel Committee, saying this. Uh, and yet the conclusions that are drawn here Again, it really seemed to, it just seems to be a complete dud. Once again, another dud by John Durham. You, you raise an interesting point there at the end about the Senate Intelligence Committee report that was put out by Marco Rubio. That was among the most damning documents that came out about Trump's ties to Russia. And it had been put out by, by Rubio, who was in charge of the committee at the time. Um, I've never really understood the Durham investigation. To me, it seemed like a way of the Justice Department trying to buy off Trump and tell him that they were doing something to look into these allegations that had come up throughout his administration about what had gone wrong inside the Russia investigation. It always seemed to me like that type of inquiry, that type of look at how the FBI, you know, proceeded would be done by an inspector general to sort of look and say, OK, we did a massive, really important politically charged investigation. Here's what we did right and here's what we did wrong. And I think what what really hurt Durham in the end is the fact that he brought these two cases to court against these two individuals in connection with the dossier and lost. And we talk a lot these days about what it means for a prosecutor to lose or the potential for a prosecutor to lose. And in the case of Durham, we saw what that meant because it really took a lot of the air out of his investigation. It allowed those who had been critical and skeptical of the investigation to look at it and say, well, what was this really all about? And when he went to trial and had to air his evidence, it, it, didn't, really, it didn't really hold up in a way 
that certainly lived up to the expectations that Trump had set for the Durham investigation. He had trumpeted this thing. He had talked about it publicly and, and privately and really was banking on it as helping him win re-election all the way back in 2020. So, Michael, we should also underline that the Justice Department in 2019, the Inspector General Michael Horowitz, launched its own investigation and found that, yes, there were flaws in the way that the FBI did its investigation, but ultimately that the investigation was warranted. Um, and so the FBI made changes, and they said that yesterday in response. They said, yes, Mr. Durham, we know all of this. We took this into account several years ago, and we've made changes into what we're doing here. So at the end of the day, for people watching who are trying to remember everything that got us here over the last, what, seven years or something like that, what is the takeaway? What is the end result of all of this? What do we know about collusion or alleged collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians? I, I think what, what we know is that the Trump campaign invited this help from the Russians. We know from our own eyes and from watching that Donald Trump asked Russia to help him. He did that very publicly and in doing so brought a lot of these questions on himself. It's, I, you, know, you know, people will will say, oh, you know, the, the media did this or the FBI did this or such. But it was Donald Trump on the campaign stump that asked Russia, you know, if you're listening to try and help find Hillary Clinton's emails. And I always go back to that moment because if you were the FBI in 2016 or you were an average American watching this or you were a member of the media, it was hard to look at the fact that he had invited that help, along with the fact that Russia was actively attacking the American democracy, and sort of say, well, what's really going on here? So it, it required people, it, you know, people said, well, 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 what's the real answer? So a lot of people in a lot of different ways went out to try and answer that question. And there were different things that were going on. Trump was trying to deal, uh, do a deal with, with, you know, in Russia at the time through Michael Cohen. Uh, Trump's son, Don Jr., meets with these Russians during the campaign about dirt that they said that they had on Hillary Clinton. Uh, you ultimately have the first national security advisor of Trump uh, lying to the FBI about his contacts with the Russians um, and then going to court to plead guilty to that. So there, there were a lot of different things that, that came out in this period of time that, that were curious and that, as an average citizen, were difficult to look at and say, OK, I can accept that on face value. Washington correspondent for The New York Times, Michael Schmidt, thank you very much for your reporting this morning.